send your presence to this place. We want to see your glory. We want to see your glory, oh God. We want to see your glory in this place. We humble ourselves. And we pray to you, Lord. Show us your glory. We want to see your glory. We want to see your presence moving in a different way. Lord of revival, come to our lives. Come to this place. We want more of you. We want more of you. We want to love you with everything. We want to serve you with everything. We want to give you everything, oh Lord. Send a revival. Send your glory, oh Lord. We want a fresh start. A revival in our lives. A revival in our families. A revival in this church. A revival in our nation. A revival in our nation. We need you, oh Lord. We need you, oh Lord. We need you. We humble ourselves. We want to see your glory. Send a revival. Lord of revival. Lord of revival. You know, Dusty and I were talking yesterday. It's like, where does revival start? How does revival start? Dusty said something very powerful. He says it starts with personal repentance. Complete surrender. Don't hold those things that you're hiding in the closet back. Surrender to God today. The altar is open. But for revival to start, it has to start on a one-on-one -on -one personal level with you and God. Repentance to the fullest. And when a lot of people do that together, revival starts. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save, all things are possible. The darkest night 
to bubble your own prayer today. There's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible. Sing it again. There's no prison, walls you can't break through, no mountains you can't move, all things are possible. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save, all things are possible. In the darkest night, you can light it up, you can light it up, God of revival, let all arise. Death is overcome. You've already won. Oh, God of revival. In the darkest night, you can light it up. You light it up. God of revival. Let override. Death is overcome. The darkest night You will light it up You will light it up God and revival Let all arise Death is overcome You are ready one God and revival Yeah. 
sit here and let the Holy Spirit marinate and just do what he's going to do today. Give him freedom. Repeat after me if you can. If you want to, if you don't, that's fine too. Holy Spirit, have your way. Do what you're going to do in me. We give you this day. We give you this service, Holy Spirit. Move. Have your way.
There's no prison Walls you can't break through No, but you can't move All things are possible There's no broken heart that you can't raise No soul that you can't save All things are possible there's no prison walls that you can't break through mountain you can't move no things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible one more time <laughs> I want to read to you a story real quick uh, and I, I think this is a story of revival okay pay attention this is, a, this is just a great story but I believe this is a story of revival and I think it kind of shows how revival starts. And this is in Ezekiel 37. And if you've been to children's church in Sunday school, you know this is the story of the Valley of Dry Bones. And so this is what it says. This is in Ezekiel 37. It says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Death. Death is the lack of life. <laughs> lifeless. Lifeless. You guys get the picture. This valley of bones. It's full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. Are you getting a picture? And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Seems impossible. So I answered, O oh Lord, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then... You shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, this should give you goosebumps. As I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling. Can you imagine Tim hearing the noise and the rattling? Can you imagine? In this valley of death, no life, right? Dry bones. Suddenly there's this noise. And this rattling. Revival starting. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. And then he's prophesied to the wind. And God breathes breath into these where there's death, right? What a story of revival, am I right? But let me ask you this question. Where did the revival begin? Individual bones. Notice it didn't say, I was in the valley and it was full of skeletons or bodies or anything like that. It was full of bones, Tiny ankle bones, finger bones, toe bones, individual bones. Do you guys see this? 
And they come together, and then life begins. Here's another thing that I thought of. Here's, here's what the Word of God says. It says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and all the earth. Why didn't he just say, you'll be my witnesses in all the earth? Why? Because I believe God starts small. God starts with individuals. And, and here's what I believe, guys. And I could be wrong about this, and I'll say, all right, I don't care if I'm wrong, right? I believe a revival is going to start in little churches. Little churches. I really believe it. And then it's going to spread. But we talked about this a couple of weeks ago when we talked about becoming people of intense prayer. I said, man, if we want revival... God's people need to become people of intense prayer. In order for that to happen, Journey Church has to become a church of intense prayer. And in order for that to happen, you have to become people of intense prayer. Do you see? It's just how it works. This story in Ezekiel, I believe this is one of the most amazing stories of revival. So if you you sit here this morning and and you're thinking about, I don't know, the country or or I don't know, even sometimes just the church in America, all this stuff, and you're going, man, it just doesn't seem alive anymore. Where, where's it going to? Cha- where's the change going to begin if it's not with you? So we're going to stand and we're going to sing this song again. And you need to make this between you and God. Um. John said we were talking about revival yesterday, and I think, of, I think it was Mark Batterson that said, if you want revival, if you really want revival, then you go in your room, you draw a circle on the floor, and you stand in that circle until God sends revival to that circle. It's about you. If we want to see true revival, it starts with revival in our own lives. It starts with prayer, repentance, desire, for more of God. So we're going to stand one more time and we're going to, whatever you want to play, John. I mean, I know I'm kind of screwing you up, but it's what I do. So let's stand together and let's, let's think about this. Keep in your head, guys. Revival begins with me. Revival begins with me. Let's sing this song one more time before we get into the service. We've seen what you can do, oh God of wonder. Your power has no end. The things you've done before, in greater measure, you will do again. There's no prison walls you can't break through, no mountain you can't move, all things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible. The darkest night, you can light it up, you can light it up, God of revival, let all the rise, death is overcome. Save 
Give him praise this morning. 